So you've got Threadripper and you need to cool it. You're interested in Noctua coolers, or maybe you're just watching this to see, hey, I've got a Threadripper and I want to do it right. Well, I'm happy to report that in a nutshell, I'm very impressed with these coolers from Noctua. I can't believe it, but especially the 120, 140 millimeter versions, they actually go toe to toe and compete with 280 millimeter radiators. Yeah, all in one radiators these tower coolers can actually do better in some scenarios. It is mind-blowing. Uh, pretty much, well, I say some scenarios, but really it's most scenarios. Uh, a radiator, well, you have to understand how a radiator works and the difference between a tower cooler and a radiator. Because if you just run some benchmarks, you're like, wow, this radiator is doing great. And it might be, but it's not really the whole story for the tower coolers. Let, but let me explain. So first up, we've got the NHU9 TR4 SP3. So TR4 SP3, that's the type of socket that you're looking at when you're talking about Threadripper and I think Epic as well, although I haven't gotten an Epic motherboard yet to test and verify and be sure. I have tried these on Threadripper motherboards and they're great. This one out of the box is the smallest. It comes in a 92 millimeter fan configuration. It does come with both fans, so you get a push-pull configuration. It's great, this little guy, 12 core, 8 core is totally fine. Honestly, it's fine even for the 16 core. It really, it, it holds its own. If you're going to do overclocking or something like that, well, maybe not so much if you're going to do a lot of overclocking. But in terms of hitting the 4.2 gigahertz XFR boost and a thread ripper working as it was designed to work, this little guy does great. It's insanely impressive. So I think if I'm building a, you know, a development workstation, home server, that kind of thing with Threadripper because, you know, 4.1, 4.2 gigahertz. Oh my gosh, I need that. Uh, this little guy, I think, would be fine. And this little guy will work, you know, even in like a 3U rack mount case, which is very, very impressive. I'm not sure if that's what Noctua was going for. And I guess it depends a little bit on your chassis, but 3U rack mount. Yeah, that cooler. Nice. Don't let the 92 millimeter fans fool you. This thing has six heat pipes and the full cold plate is in contact with the full top of the Threadripper CPU. So it's got pretty much optimal thermal transfer. Now the, uh, <laughs> the cooling pipes do sort of curve in. So like right at the edges, you know, maybe not. But in terms of like the heat production area, one of those, uh, two of those four locations that you have with dyes as far as, you know, the th which th dyes are active on Threadripper, uh, it does fine. XFR boost, you know, no warnings, things like that, it's fine. Even overclocking up to about 1.3, 1.35 volts, you know, talking like 3.8, 3.9 gigahertz, it did fine. The air coming off of it really was quite warm, but it did fine. It was honestly extremely impressive. Now for these two, the U12S and the U14S, holy smokes. I did not think that a tower cooler could be that good, but I guess combined with the relatively huge size of a Threadripper CPU, Plus the heat production areas on Threadripper are kind of spread out versus traditional CPUs where it's just one piece of silicon. These tower coolers did great. It was, it was honestly, I was not expecting the tower coolers to do as well as they did. Now, as you know, in the Threadripper retail packaging, AMD uh, bundles an Asetek adapter, like a water cooling bracket to go um, with the SP3 TR4 CPU socket that Threadripper uses. So you can totally use those. And in the kits that they sent reviewers, there was a Thermaltake 360 millimeter radiator typically, and that would mate up with that, you know, Asetek all-in-one adapter that you would see with, you know, Threadripper. And that works fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't cover the, the top of the CPU completely. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's, it, it's, it, it makes a difference, but it's not like, a showstopper. These, these coolers cover the entire top of the CPU and they work really well. The difference between an all-in-one cooler and a tower cooler in general is that the tower cooler will heat up really quickly, but it'll also dissipate its heat really quickly. When you're talking about an all-in-one cooler, if an all-in-one cooler is absorbing more heat than it was designed to dissipate, the whole thing will heat up and then after the CPU stops producing heat, it'll take a little while for it to cool off. 
I was actually kind of scratching my head as I was testing it because, you know, letting it warm up for about an hour and running through all of the benchmarks and things like that, I was getting different results than when I first powered on the machine and just ran through testing in about 15 or 20 minutes. And that makes sense because, you know, when you're running through tests, when you're running through different kinds of benchmarks, the CPU is going to be really busy for a couple of minutes and then the CPU is going to be idle and then the CPU is going to be busy again for a couple of minutes. So uh, it's, it's a... It's a, it's a varying workload. And so if you just look at raw temperatures, you know, the tower coolers are gonna get really hot relatively quickly. But then when you stop doing whatever it is, they're gonna cool off relatively quickly. With an all-in-one cooler, it's gonna take a, a lot longer time for the all-in-one cooler to come up to temperature. And it's gonna take a little bit longer for that all-in-one to also dissipate the heat after the heat production stops. And it's not that the all-in-one cooler is doing badly. In fact, it's that these tower coolers, when we're talking about performance, does the, the, the CPU enter its turbo? Is it overclockable? Can it deal with heat dissipation? These tower coolers do just as well, better in some cases, than a 280 millimeter all-in-one radiator. It's not that the 280 millimeter radiator is bad or that the you know, Asetek adapter, like the thing doesn't cover the whole CPU. Although those are little factors, those are little factors that sort of help edge out a win for these coolers. That said, Noctua's build quality and everything like that, you know, impressive as always. Noctua does make a top-notch cooler, in my opinion, in terms of how it's assembled and put together. All of these coolers come with the necessary tools and installation hardware. Uh, these two, even though they only come with a single fan, they do come with the metal uh, wire thing so that you can set up push-pull configuration. If you are gonna be doing overclocking on Threadripper, I'd recommend you go ahead and do a push-pull configuration that works really well. One of the coolest features that these heat sinks have is that you can unscrew the brackets and slide them. See, the TR4 SP3 Threadripper socket is asymmetrical, so you can't really, you know, you don't have a ton of options for mounting your CPU cooler. Uh, Noctua has thought of that, and they, they give you a thing to deal with that, because especially this 140 millimeter cooler, because it's so large, it may interfere with the first PCI Express by 16 slot on your motherboard. And just a couple of millimeters is all that you really need. So on the bracket, you can actually slide the entire CPU cooler up to eight millimeters uh, higher. So as long as your, your case, you, if you're talking about a tower case or something like that, you can actually slide it a little bit toward the VRM side of the board to give your first PCI Express slot that much more clearance, which is great. Now, a lot of Threadripper motherboards, they don't use the first slot, or it might be like a PCI Express by one, and your graphics card is uh, lowered one slot. Um, but some motherboards have put the PCI Express by 16 slot in the very first available place on the chassis, you know, right next to your IO panel. And in that case, I would recommend that you definitely, you know, slide your heat sink up just a little bit, unless your case prohibits that. So keep that in mind. Now, in terms of case compatibility, I've done some case testing. The Corsair Carbide 400C, totally compatible with all of those. You get plenty of clearance. The uh, Fractal Meshify C, also fine with all three of these. You've got plenty of clearance for that one as well. Um, I'm putting together a machine in the Lee & Lee DK05. There's not quite enough clearance for this cooler. Uh, the 140 millimeter cooler says that it needs 165 millimeters of clearance. The Lee & Lee uh, DK05 says that it's got 160 millimeters of CPU clearance. I think it's more like 10 millimeters that I need as opposed to five millimeters, but this one is 158 millimeters, the 120 millimeter fan version from Noctua, the, the 12S, and that one works fine in the DK05. I, I may ultimately switch to a 360 millimeter radiator or something like that in the DK05 just so I can have it exhausting out the back of the case. But the temptation to keep using the 12S Noctua is there because no maintenance, there's no chance of a pump failure, it's solid state operation, nothing's gonna fail. I like zero maintenance things. I mean, custom loop water cooling is really cool and I might build something for that one day, but I'm kinda lazy and I really don't want the maintenance of that, so it's just me. Noctua has done it. I mean, they've we've really gotta give them credit. They've really done a good job with this and really done a good job under really tight time constraints, so bravo. If you guys pick up one of these or you have additional questions about these three coolers from Noctua, please do join us in the forums at forum.level1texas.com. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I will see you there. What am I doing making videos on CPU coolers? I got more Threadripper systems to build. Blah! That can be after the credits. I don't know. It's probably fine. I still can't get over that 
tower coolers are beating all in ones, at least on Threadripper, uh, consistently. So, yeah, it's neat. It's good. Good job, Noctua. Nicely done.